Welcome to Now Try This, the podcast where two best friends get together every week to try something new. I'm Marcus, and that beautiful, glassed, hey hatted, vox machina out man is Nick. Marcus, it is the time. The time is here. We've been waiting for long, long years, and we have finally gotten to our critical role episode. Now, A we loop. are going to talk so much Full about circle. so many things. We're going to talk about some things, but that's what I want to talk about first. Yes. Our first episode five years ago, when you said, hey, Nick, you're really sad. Let's do a podcast. (laughs) Uh, To be fair, we were both really sad. Hey, Nick, we're both extremely depressed and sad. Yeah. We're both very lonely and on the brink of death. Let's start a podcast. Yeah. And we did. Yeah, we did. And you you decided that it would be best to challenge each other to try things. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do on the show. That inkling feeling you have when your best friends won't watch the thing you are in love with. We said to hell with that. We're going to make each other do it. (laughs) And the first thing, the first love and passion that I gave you was critical role Mm -hmm. yes you remember that episode at all i i barely remember that episode but i do remember being very upset by the extra member that they had that ended up not going on to be a part of critical role in the future because he was eating Uh, popcorn that whole first episode and it just made me very angry for some reason how funny we're talking a little bit about that here but marcus i didn't have to give you this episode no, Usually this show is a back and forth, a tit a tat, a quid pro quo kind of situation mm-hmm. where I give you, you give me. But today we've been given a challenge by the fans. That's right. You guys, anybody and everybody on patreon.com slash now try this cast. Everyone that donates gets to vote on a try every month. And if you get five dollars, you get to suggest what we vote on, just like Tizam Pope did. And they suggested the legend of Vox Machina. Hell yes, which is great. I love the Patreon for this because sometimes the Patreon gives us things that we definitely would have done anyway. Marcus, you would have had this next week. (laughs) (laughs) Because you are so fucking passionate about this thing. So a lot of times we'll have to go in blind or like both not knowing something. But Nick, this is something that you are very intimately knowledgeable of. Yeah, and I, it's funny, because if I we did have to do it next week, you would have had to watch six episodes, not three. But mm-hmm. uh, lucky for you, we did it this week, so only Hell three yeah. episodes are out as of recording this. Three more come out on Friday. But Marcus, but before we get to the show, before we get to that, I want to let everyone know, patreon.com slash now try this cast to join the community. If you don't have any money, that's totally okay. If you do want to support the show, though, you can get five stars on iTunes or Spotify and you can catch us live on twitch.tv slash now try this cast most thursdays go check out our instagram or twitter to see when we're recording and when we're going live guys we appreciate we hear all the praise we love you guys and thank you so oh and, and go to twitch yeah uh, go to uh, <laughs> twitch Twitch.com, Twitch, Twitch.tv the slash Now Try This Cast. And use your Prime. On. Use your Prime. This yeah. episode is half brought to you by Amazon Prime. That's true. The episode is streaming on Amazon Prime. So you have it. So use it to subscribe to us. Yeah. Everyone that has an Amazon Prime has a free Twitch Prime that they can subscribe to one Twitch channel. Mm-hmm. You should use it on us because you probably want to give critical role your real money I was so say, you give them your critical roles on twitch right oh yeah they and are they're the also on thursdays one. make the, you yes uh, they we're are on, on wednesday right today we're wednesday today we are in wednesday honor today. respecting respecting Respect. them how dare it's we not stream respecting. on their day that's what but guys doing. normally uh that jumps to dude in the chat hi i see you there hello nice to see you now usually it's funny we're usually right before the show when we end 20 minutes later critical role starts so guys if you want a critical role primer on thursdays you check us out <laughs> then go watch uh the professionals do it over <laughs> on critical oh, role that's funny now marcus what have you been up to how are you are you ready for this week how has your week been filled in preparation for this wonderful episode we are doing today stressed out 
well. I've been house hunting, a whole ass adult, and we are going to see houses, looking at houses, and maybe, maybe gonna get a better setup for me, because your setup's looking great. And so be over here, I gotta buy a whole house so I could have a nice setup. If it's making you feel any better, I am moving the week after next week. Some people just say two weeks away. Oh, away. I just say, I say the week after next week. That's how I say that. And I don't know if my setup, the walls in the room are closer than these are. So mm. I either need to do something funky like you and aimed at a corner of a wall. Gross. <laughs> It's beautiful. <laughs> it works. Or okay. my throw is going to go off. Uh, nobody cares about this stuff. But I, I, my setup might not be as nice in the new place. Or it might be better. Or we shall see. come over to New Jersey, the New Jersey suburbs, where I will be buying a house and re record in my beautiful studio that I'll have Ooh, set up. Wow. Guys, if you want us <laughs> to stream live together from Marcus's studio, he is buying. We need more Patreons to pay for the cat fare for me to get back and forth from Jersey. That's so true. It won't pay for the house, but it'll pay, hopefully pay for the cat fare. Patreon.com mm -hmm. slash now try this cast. Marcus, I think we need to get right into okay, it. Yeah, I, 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 let's do it. Let's do it. I have let's no bullshit. Around. I have nothing to say. Usually we would talk about titties or something else random, but not today. Dude, Critical Role. Yes. Critical Role, for those that don't know, is a, a live play Dungeons and Dragons campaign played by friends and voice actors that used to stream on Geek and Sundry years ago, eventually formed their own corporation and stream themselves now. And they decided, because they get a million streamers every week, that they had a big enough fan base to have an animated show. And Marcus, I don't know if you know the story, mm -hmm. but they pitched this to networks. They pitched this to all the networks. They are voice actors. They have connections. They, they have the connections. Dungeons they pitched it to Amazon. They pitched the it to Netflix. Thing. They pitched it to Hulu. The an, an animated show. Oh, okay. An animated show of their show. Got it. Everybody said no. Wow. Or wanted to change or wanted to change so many things and give give take away control that they had they had to say no. So they wow. decided to go to Kickstarter. They said, you know what? To hell with it. Let's make a couple episodes ourselves. So originally it was gonna be like a 40 minute special. And they were like, guys, we need about a million dollars to do that. If you guys give us a million dollars, we can have a 40 minute special. It would be great. It would be for you, the community. Mm -hmm. And they hit a million dollars in the first hour. Wow. They left that Kickstarter, that 30 day Kickstarter with $11 million at the time, the biggest media kickstarter of ever that's wild <laughs> and nick that's and exactly they changed the stretch goal to be not just those that 40 minutes up special they broke that up to two episodes mm -hmm. and then added 10 more to that so they had a whole first season because of that's that that's crazy million. that's amazing yeah i mean i amazing. heard that about the kickstarter thing because it was so big and because you and the our, our friend t who recommended this for the podcast like mm -hmm. over on patreon like the fact that you guys are so in love with this show like i kind of know what's going on but i don't watch it i tried getting into it a couple of times but i couldn't really get into it the episodes are just too long each episode's four hours long of the stream not of the animated series yeah and so they're just playing the game just playing the game and having fun and that's great but it's a lot to digest i can't i can't sit down for four hours and do it so it takes super me super reasonable it takes me like a week to watch one episode and that just is too much of my time and you fell too far behind i remember when yeah. campaign two started you were like i'm gonna try it. i'm gonna try it. i you did tried for, for like a while six seven eight episodes yeah and you were there you were trying yeah and then you just slowly got farther and farther behind mm -hmm. listen but besides that besides that one criticism critical role is cool yeah right? it's fun well uh, uh, more than one criticism but i would say the a second criticism is the fan base for me i as oh, an outsider sure. of the fan base i think that it seems like the fan base is rabid and I can't tell if they even like Critical Role. Like you are very different than a lot of the fans I see interacting with them online, but you're also not different because maybe most fans are like cool, fun people who like Critical Role and respect them and look up to them and admire them. But like from what I see, I feel like I see a lot of like intense criticisms, not coming from like the regular everyday people, but coming from like the fans and it seems scary to jump into and i'm also scared to for this episode because i don't want to say anything bad and have them jump down my throat you should say everything bad because if anyone comes for you i will come for their lives because marcus the Appreciate truth is it. when critical role started it was a dumb D, &D show right some actors that were pretty good at what they did matt is a pretty good storyteller everyone's a pretty good storyteller it was pretty cool at the beginning they got visceral right away one why because girls were playing the game because they bent the rules every once 
once in a while because they weren't doing a perfect one to one. They came from Pathfinder mm-hmm. and recreated the characters in Five E when they went on the stream because streaming for Five E is quicker because Pathfinder mm-hmm. has too many rules. Yes. So there was growing pains there at the beginning. Those were the negative things. Then they got bigger. Then they got bigger. Then they got bigger. The 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 it's it is the minority that are the shitheads. But they you are right that they're fucking loud sometimes. They yes. are who make the headlines. They're mm-hmm. who make them have to issue apologies. Yes. I I think I think it's hard because Critical Role as a company and as people do almost everything right. They are super respectful to different communities and subsects of culture. They try their best to be so inclusive and never divisive. They always lead with positivity. They try to only work with companies that are good. They try to mm-hmm. only do things that are good. So every time one of those things falters a little bit because they're a company of 20, 30 people and they can't do everything right, they stumble. Yeah. But when they stumble, it the, the the people that love them fight back so hard that the people who have the criticism have to fight back so hard to be heard. Oh, and wow. then they're also being mean. So it's just this big old like hot pot of you're not even sure mm-hmm. where the just for example is a few controversies that have happened. Sure. One, they had a partnership with Wendy's because okay. Wendy's came out with RPG and they were like, hey, Critical Role, you're the biggest RPG. Do this Wendy's campaign. Yeah, 100%. The Wendy's has, is bad about their tomato farmers. I don't know the whole story, but like the way they treat their farmers is bad. In okay. a nutshell, that's the TLDR of why we don't like Wendy's. Okay. Okay. Fan base went raven. The whole so much so that they had to take that stream down and wow. break their partnership with Wendy's. Yeah. Which hmm. which sucks because they're a corporation trying to make money. And but also like it's but they also want to be respectful. So if people are hurt, they want to be respectful. Another example. They just started campaign three and their opening credits are safari themed. You know, okay. like the safari hats and like yeah. old timey, like that's the theme. And they're like going through the jungle. And people sure. thought they were appropriating and being divisive and insensitive to colonial in india mm. understand the criticism i'm here to listen to you but the vitriol that happened because of the small criticism on both sides mm-hmm. became rabid so much so that they had an issue apology they you know yeah. everyone was talking about it. it's a whole thing you know and that every little time something like that happens it does cause this huge upsurge. you know yeah. and then there are people that are like oh I, I like the show but i think they have too much combat oh i like the show but there's not enough combat yeah. everybody wants something else from the show and i think because it's so good mm-hmm. and inclusive and great, it means people expect a lot. And also and they can't and the expectations are never reachable. They're never attainable. It's different than something started in mainstream media because it's something that's a TV show or whatever. Yeah, the fans kind of have some input. For the most but for the most part it's already created it's done yeah. and if the fans love it then they get to make get they get more of it but they don't get to oh, influence yeah. it in any way whereas this, this it life. started off on geek and sundry the small little f- like thing for nerds for fans of stuff and then it grew and it grew and grew and it was like so funded by and heavily influenced by the fans and so yeah. especially being on twitch with like subscriptions and donations and all those kinds of things the, the fans are directly putting their money into this project which is like i could understand why they feel so invested in it totally and i and i totally understand why that has happened and it being live i think you're completely right that there's that barrier of entry is so much smaller in terms Mm -hmm. of like getting to them and they yeah. all do respond online and they will respond to tweets and they they're not Vin Diesel. But, you know, these the numbers that they have are, you know, the 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 numbers of people they're pulling in live every week is more than, you know, some network television shows. You know what yeah, I mean? That's true. You know, so I don't know. I, I, I But I agree with you. I, I think the fan base does make it a little hard to get into that side. That being said, uh-huh. I was one of those people that gave them eleven million dollars. Oh, wow. you, you personally just won eleven million dollars. You went straight for it. I was one of the people that gave them. <laughs> <laughs> that much money uh, uh do you want to know how much i donated to make this happen this is how I much i want to say 120 dollars. 200 dollars. you donated 200 dollars. so did tizam <laughs> we love critical role so much that we were like here is money without any any expectation of anything back to help you make the show I've, and that's how so much that's the beauty of this fandom right I've isn't that never amazing loved anything that much i know that's you want to see what crazy. i got crazy yeah what do you get you i got, got a teddy this bear, right? cool hat which oh, uh means okay. i'm a part of the crew of the wow. Legend of Vox Machina. Does that I'm mean you get to walk on the Whatever. set you, when yeah, when they're doing recordings for the animated show? I got you get this to beautiful walk on set. box. 
I do, I do. Beautiful box. Inside, I got a bag of Critical Role dice. I got some Vox Machina playing cards. Oh, that's cute. I got Vax's three daggers. Oh, uh, okay. Little leper openers. I got some stickers. I got an art cell. Oh, that's pretty nice. Show. That's cool. Very cool. Yeah, I like it's that. Very cool, actually. And I got Trinket. Oh, that's cute. Okay. And he, the armor can come off. That's a lot of stuff. So that cost that me $200. That's a lot of stuff, though. <laughs> it's your favorite thing. I, I don't I don't fault anybody yeah. for donating money to see more of their favorite thing get created. Listen. Well, I mean, did I also spay $100 for this art? But Nick, okay. Or $100 so, for this action figure? Oh, my God. Okay, so that's what I'm saying, or $100 though. Like, and all these Funko Pops? That's why fans feel so, like, invested in it, right? Because yeah. you're spending 100%. so much money on the products. And so, Nick, I have to ask you personally... As someone who donated $200, you can speak to the the sort of like semi controversy of like them going to Amazon and yeah. And how do you feel about that? Since you put, I mean, $200 is a lot of money. Great, great question. That is a wonderful question. I think here's the thing. Oh, old man Ram in the chat. Thank you. Yeah. It, that's what it was. It was, uh, they, they, they don't have their own farmers. It was, okay. it was a whole, but there was a whole bunch of coalition, uh, to help tomato farmers wages. Cause they were getting got almost it. like slave wages. Okay. But yeah, G- so you got called. So when I heard in the chat, by the way, uh, thank you so much, uh, Krim. I appreciate it. So, <laughs> so when, the Amazon bought them. I was floored because Amazon buying them guaranteed a second season without even the show releasing. Mm-hmm. That I think is such a big win for what yeah. this is. That is amazing. This little indie Kickstarter thing that was almost nothing. They're getting produced by Tip Mouse, mm-hmm. which is a corporate a studio that also did things like The Legend of Korra. Yes. It's a legit studio, and they're making a second season without any, without it even coming out. Mm-hmm. And with Amazon backing, that means they don't have to pay for advertising. They don't have to pay for marketing. Yeah. Amazon has an invested interest to get this out there. So I'm sure you can tell Amazon put fucking money out of it. Yeah. They're like, great. Legend of Vox Machina, Invincible. Uh, this is our whole wing of mm-hmm. our nerd animated. We are doing this thing. Here it is. This is yeah. a part of it. And that is huge. It is really that is huge, huge for the, the reason I love this show is because when you watch it, it feels it, it is the closest thing. It's the closest thing I have ever experienced to playing D&D yourself. It's still nowhere near as good. Mm-hmm. Playing D&D yourself is nothing like it. You know that there's yeah. nothing like playing D&D yeah. yourself. But watching them, how good they are, how good of friends they are is the closest thing you can get. So mm-hmm. making that even more accessible by a cartoon so other people can be like, what's this? Oh, it's a D&D and get more people in D&D, I think is a wonderful thing. Now, okay, has it been met by controversy? Yes, I think for two reasons. One, because I think people suck. The, the animated series don't has been met by controversy? D&D. Yes. Okay. Oh, because, I'm interested to, to hear why. Well, because of Amazon. I think <laughs> Krim just said I would much prefer to watch Critical Role instead of playing. Some people do that. Listen, Some people have stress and anxiety around yeah. it or find it boring. And they just like to see it done by the best there is. Listen, I, I don't get it, but that's yeah. I, I respect it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but Amazon is a big corporation. Amazon is a big corporation with lots of money and lots of places and lots of controversy i mean amazon this uh, uh this past yeah. year has gone through so many labor things fair enough so the fact that it was just like the tomato thing yeah connected to a corporation a lot of the people in the community are like they don't use amazon for moral reasons mm-hmm. and they're like well what the fuck critical girl how dare you connect with this corporation yeah and while i respect that point i i don't think that not it's not it's not about that. The, they're the gatekeepers. They're who have. I think fundamental change does need to happen. But does that mean that Critical Role should continue not growing? Continue yeah. not being accessible to the masses? Amazon Prime is probably the most accessible way they could have done it. Like even Netflix, you know, sure. is harder because you know. I think I think Amazon Prime. I think a lot of people have Amazon Prime for Amazon Prime. Yeah, like just for the fact the of shipping, Amazon Prime. Yeah. You know, I think I think sure Netflix is bigger. Probably Hulu is bigger. But if you go to Hulu, that's Disney. That's even worse. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and you go thing. to Netflix. Yeah. You know, I mean, like. Netflix does fucked up shit too. Yeah, that's true. Any major corporation is big because they've done something evil at some point. So you can't like yeah. at a certain point, it's just a, a never a battle you're never gonna win. And a yeah. fully oh, coolie makes oh. a good point. 
Like, yeah, you can't. They would have to leave Twitch also because Twitch yeah. is owned by Amazon, which some people are like, well, I don't watch on Twitch. I watch it on YouTube. And I'm like, that's owned by Google. It doesn't matter where you're watching it, where you're consuming yeah. any media is a huge corporation that is doing bad shit. I think I think so. So you might as what well benefit think? from it. I think you might as well benefit I think from so. it. If, if yeah. you can take money from a, a big evil corporation, then take it. Mm. Who the fuck cares? Yeah, I agree. I agree wholeheartedly. But, you know, there has been some controversy. But besides it, that, besides that controversy, I will say probably the swell of support for the show has been huge. That's people great. are loving it, supporting it. It's got 100% on Ryan Tomatoes right now. Mm-hmm. It is people people are watching it. There's a little mini campaign I saw where people were like, "Hey guys, we need to have this be watched 1.2 billion minutes." And the reason for that is because that's what Wheel of Time had. And if this uh... is makes as so much money as Wheel of Time, then we fucking win. Yeah. You know? Yeah, Which yeah. I'm like, "Hell yeah." yeah. Hell yeah because because if this works, if this works, uh corporations always take the wrong lessons, right? If this works, that means more shows like like this are going to get made mm-hmm. that means the detention dimension 20s and the adventure zones yeah. and the dungeons and daddies are going to get their shot it's true that means there's going to be more fantasy things a you know a lord of the rings tv show there's yeah. going to be more of these things the dnd movie is going to get more attention you know mm-hmm. so i think i think these are all great things no i agree i agree i think that going into this i was very excited i was like finally i didn't get to watch the first season of critical or the first campaign of critical role because i just i I, you know i felt it was too much and it wasn't for me i felt like sometimes it's hard for me to get into fantasy stuff like i love fantasy but i'm more sci-fi fantasy and sci-fi stuff than i am fantasy i love lord of the rings i think that's an incredible series but i like playing dungeons and dragons but like Having to listen to people play Dungeons and Dragons or watch people play Dungeons and Dragons has always been hard for me. Like, especially if they take it seriously. If it's just jokes and people goofing off, then that's more digestible for me. I could watch Adventure Zone because it lulled me in with just comedy and people goofing off and then eventually got a serious story later. And then I was like, whatever, I'm here for comedy anyway. Same thing with like all the other like sort of like Dungeons and Dragons-esque podcasts and stuff like that I've listened to. But this one was just like, it felt like it felt very serious. It felt very like these people were just doing such a good job. It felt like I wasn't even watching them play Dungeons Dragons or they weren't really improvising or something. Yeah. And I was like, okay, it was like too well done for me. I understand. Just to clarify what Krim said, a Lord of the Rings TV show, like the one coming out. To clarify, I I don't mean like the, the Lord of the Rings show is coming out. I mean, things that are different, like if Critical Role is is funny and silly and all mm-hmm. fantasy is serious and Critical Role is, I think, bringing something new and different. A la like an Invincible or Boys where it's like uh, superhero shows can be something else, you know? Yeah, yeah. Fantasy can be something else. And I think Critical Role is our gateway to that. I think it's our gateway to have silly, funny, irreverent kind of things in the sphere, like more diversity. I agree. Um, I mean, there's, there's silly, fun fantasy out there, but you're right that it's not the mainstream stuff that you always yeah. well, see the Game of Thrones, on TV. Yeah. Well, not because of Game of Thrones. I feel like fantasy just always, always like been like that. It's been old wizards and Maybe. magic. Like f- yeah. in old fantasy books, it's like, oh yes, and this person begot this person, and that person begot this person. And then eventually, yeah. you know, sometimes you get fun stuff. There's fun stuff out there. Like someone said, yeah, Princess well, Bride. Robin, how many more Princess Brides have there been? But but I'm saying there's stuff out there. It is few and far between. And like you said, hopefully Critical Role makes more sort of fun, modern fantasy yeah. happen. Yeah, just like now, the superhero genre used to all feel the same. And then mm-hmm. things happen and sure. time went yeah. by. And now we get like weird superhero films all the time. We get such different, diverse, different things, you know, like they try mm-hmm. to make horror ones. They try to make this. They try to make that. What? J.R.R. Tolkien? Oh, yeah. He he made... <laughs> oh, because The Hobbit was silly yeah. and fun, and then yeah, Lord yeah. of the Rings is fucking dark and epic. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. Yes, Darren. You were yes. too high. You were too uh, smart too for smart. me. She's too smart. She's too smart for us. Saying. It's fine. Now, okay. I think the it's show. time to talk about the show, The Marcus. show. Yeah. The show. We gave so much backstory. I talked about so my the first fears. Two, you talked yeah, about first, your love. Let's get into it. I'm tired. The first two episodes... The, fir- <laughs> the first two episodes... It's funny. It's not what happened on stream. The first two episodes of the show... Okay. 
okay. or what happened before they ever even started streaming. It's a oh, story wow. from them. That's so it's a story cool. we've never seen before. We've only ever Got heard it. about. I And then the fir- third episode is in the stream. I'll be straight up with you, Nick. I yeah. did not like the first episode. And I'm sure you loved it. And it was one of the best pieces yeah. of TV you've ever seen or some yeah, shit. Right. I, I, I accurate. really did not like it. It was, I, I think something about the writing and the characters, it felt like there was something I was missing or that it was just like, they did a good job. And it's not even that they didn't do a good job of introducing all the characters, right? Like, I think they did a great job of introducing the characters and the characters are still being introduced after the third episode, which is great. You're finding out characters' backstories, just like a game of D&D yeah. where that stuff would come up naturally through the course of the game. Totally. I don't mind that. But there's still just this like gnawing feeling like I should know more than I do. And I know that like certain things are wink and nods to like what happened during the campaign or like, oh, like this is for the fans. And I was just sitting there as someone who's not a fan who doesn't know what's going on being like, I know that's for the fans. Uh, and it just stresses me out because it feels like I want to know. I want to be included in the it's, jokes. Yeah, it's, um, <laughs> it's left out syndrome. What do they call it? It's um, it's fucking FOMO. Yes, I'm having FOMO with like, Marcus, I'm like I, when something's supposed to be an introduction for me. Yeah, I think I think what you're saying is completely accurate. I you're right. I love I loved every moment of all of these things. Uh, but Lexi mm-hmm. had to watch this episode twice because she was like, there's just so many people. And I think that's the reason. That's why that's why any show ever doesn't do this they introduce the yeah. people one at a time yep and they go slow and if the if you were to write the story carte blanche without the way it had to be done because mm-hmm. it had to be done this way you would have introduced vex and vax growing through the town yes for doing sure. some stealing from something show ro- how running into meet. grog and pike yes. doing something else uh-huh. and then you, that's and honestly it's so funny because we see that and then we're like oh it's higher tropes we see that all the time but yeah. the reason we see it all the time is because you kind of need it yeah. you need that slow introduction because I think you're right. As soon as this episode started, I was like, boom, I'm in. I know who all these people exactly. are. They're my best friends. I've seen yeah. them a million you're times. Like, my you're like, my friends are here again. And you're like, who? he's like, who's that big guy? And then he does <laughs> one thing and then does the same thing for three more minutes. And then you're yeah. like, oh yeah, the big guy. And even yeah, me, who I, I've watched episodes of Critical Role, I know Grog. I know these You vaguely characters. know I vaguely who the people are, them. yeah. But even then I'm like, yeah. uh, what am I missing? Is there something I'm missing here? Yeah, uh, uh, like literally hundreds and hundreds of hours of yeah. online stream. More epi- More hours than there are Simpsons episodes. Wow, that's interesting. Yeah. That's crazy. Between all their episodes, well, but every I, episode there's three hundred episodes almost, episode. <laughs> and they're four hours each. Yeah. So that's that, but that's what I'm saying. Like that that feeling where I didn't quite feel like the world was inviting me in as an outsider yeah. was was kind of jarring for the first episode. Yeah, also, I, I don't I don't think you're wrong. I don't think you're wrong. Also, I feel like another criticism I had of the first episode was, and this Please. isn't a big one, but the humor, it felt like they had a, a quota they had to meet for curse words. And I don't have a problem with cursing. I curse all the time. But it just yeah. felt like there was an abundance of them where it was like, why is there 42 fucks in this episode when there could have been 30 and that would have been fine with me it just felt like every time it was like why it's like cursing isn't inherently funny and i feel like in the first episode i don't know what happened but it feels like they didn't get that yeah i think i feel like what you just said almost describes every adult thing i've almost ever seen like right i feel Mm -hmm. like the boys felt that same way at the beginning invincible feels that same way at the beginning Uh uh-huh it it's I think it's just a pro- and maybe it's us. Maybe it's just us attuning to it. And then later they're doing the exact same amount. But now we're used to it. I don't maybe. even know. Like we would need to have a swear counter to really know. <laughs> we'd have to like have analytics. But I ag- I don't disagree with you again. I feel like the um the humor does feel more refined as we go on. I feel sure. like the beginning does feel a little over your head. Yeah. But again, I think I feel like it's one of those things where they're just trying to set up like what you're in for. Yeah. And, you know, they I feel like if you go too far the other way, if you go five minutes and then you get a fuck you're like where'd this fuck come from yeah uh, so you have to front load it but again i i think i think you're and i, I feel I like understand the Kristen. gore levels i love gore you you fucking berserk i have a tattoo of berserk it's one of the goriest fucking things in the world i love yeah. it but gore i, I feel like has to be used in the right way where like grog yeah. rips a dude hand off immediately and i feel like just how casual the gore is is fine and yeah. it's honestly true to DD. you're murdering people yeah. all the time constantly that's, yeah and you're yeah, just yeah. like ah oh, fuck i you didn't get realize in a fight and i was like i cut off his hand yeah i didn't realize i no murdered like 18 people just like in one session but yeah that being said having all that gore 
lessens the impacts when the gore is needed like later on when we see the dragon destroying the village right like yeah. i feel like stuff like that is a little less impactful when everything's gory think about invincible right like the show is pretty gory but then you have that really intense moment when he's fighting all of the, the that world's Super justice heroes. league fighting all the superheroes yeah. and it's super brutal it's super intense and it feels you feel every punch in that scene because it has yeah. more weight because the rest of it wasn't as brutal as that. It's same thing with the season finale. That's another very brutal, intense thing. And even though the whole show is brutal, it never feels that intense. And yeah. I feel like again, I, I, I don't I don't and I want to disagree with you because, mm -hmm. you know, it's my favorite. This is my new favorite sure. thing in the world. Yeah, but I, I think you're I think you're right. Like the, when the first episode started and they have that group of adventurers that fights the dragon before they. do, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the one guy's face falls onto the other person's face. I had to like rewind it to even understand what happened. And I was like, <laughs> oh, his face fell onto his face. That's wow. That's that's brutal. That's fucking OK. Shit. Okay, yeah. Fuck. All right. OK. All right. Yeah. Oh, fuck. OK. And so but then but then once you get later, it gets yeah. almost it, it feels less. It feels like exactly, more yes. apropos. Sure. You know, yes. like when I the guy gets stabbed in the second episode, when the, the skinny vampire looking dude, which is which is funny, they made him look like a vampire because you mm -hmm. actually get a vampire. But yeah. the guy from the council that looks like he's going to be the evil one, but it's not him. Yeah. Uh, when he gets stabbed in his basement and it's brutally stabbed through the whole chest, you're like, oh, like it seemed warned. It seemed yeah. appropriate, you know. Yeah. But the first episode, I think they were just trying to it have felt fun, like go shock for and it, awe get out or there. something. I don't know. It just yeah. felt like they were trying to cram in like a ton of violence and a ton of cursing yeah. just so that way they could be like, look yeah. at us. This is a, an adult show. We're mature here. Yeah, I feel like the first two episodes are uh, a labor of love. They are super necessary. They did the best they could, but they were always having a really hard, high hill mm -hmm. to climb. Yeah. But that being said, I think and I think you'll you'll agree, even with like these growing pains and figuring it out and these things that are like just not quite right. It gets there by the end. Like, mm -hmm. I think by the end of that second episode, I think I'm like, OK, I understand what's going on. I get the tone of the show. I see where they're going. And yeah. then by the time you get to the third episode, you can tell, like, that's really where the show starts. I, I agree that the third episode is where the show starts. The second episode episode yeah. also i feel like the first two episodes should have been one episode they, and, they are they were supposed to be yeah it, it feels yeah. like that it feels like these it feels two like an hour movie to start thing. the show it would have been a great one hour long narrative that has like an arc and everything and then you continue yeah. with the show from there it's the clone wars right it's mm -hmm. the clone wars before yes. the clone wars yeah yeah, yeah. it's 100 percent the clone wars yeah. i think that was their intention i think you're supposed to watch it back to back i don't think you're supposed to watch them separately yeah that's why they released them at the same time how do you feel about them killing a dragon in the second episode as D, &D players, cool. do you think did Dude, they do that? Well, they were yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. This this story. Well, so you so okay. So a couple spoilers for what's going to come down the pike. Uh, just a little bit for one second. Mm -hmm. You know that eventually they fight a whole conclave of dragons, mm -hmm. the Chroma Conclave. Yeah. In the narrative show, there's only four out of the five colors because they killed that fifth color one before the stream started. It was like the preamble. Uh, yeah, That's why it, when they it, get it. to the general's thing, there's all that dragon iconography. That's why there's that speech of him saying, we're going to take over again. That's yeah. why there's that sigil on his floor that has the five yep. heads of the dragon. Mm -hmm. So that so they're they're trying to shoot their shot because that's all set up for after the first season which is really right. cool really yeah. like daring like they're like listen this is our shot let's fucking try that, let's but that's get that the shit best thing the best shows set up their final season in the first season you know like yeah they're trying yeah which is great Oh, uh, oh, even after that, the, spoilers more as Vax spoilers. is sorry, as Vax <laughs> is looking in the treasure chest of the uh -huh. Briarwoods in yeah. the third episode and he reads a name out loud. He says the whispered one. Yeah, that's the villain on the final arc. Oh, really? At the end of the show. Mm -hmm. oh, they are, wow. they, Matt set it all up from there. That's crazy. For when he did that campaign. Yeah, really it's cool. fucking wild. Uh, so no more spoilers. No more spoilers. So spoilers are over. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it's cool. I think it's cool for a couple different reasons. One, I think it's cool because they lost and they were like, fuck, mm -hmm. it's a fucking dragon. Let's get the fuck yeah. out of here. I love that. I love that because in D&D, well, I feel, like, I feel they like at the end of the dragon, right? For the way it seemed, no, no. the dragon was like, no, I mean, dead. We think, I mean, we no, can the assume dragon's dead. it's the probably dragon's still dead. alive. I meant, I meant in the first episode. The oh, first okay. episode, remember, they went yes, to fight yes, him, they yes. lost, they left. Yeah. And then they were like, let's go kill him. Mm -hmm. In D&D, &D, when you're playing, when, when I'm playing with new new people, yeah. if I'm ever playing with someone new, 
the most important lesson as a DM that I try to teach them is you can run away from a fight. Yeah. I'm going to put things in front of you that are so hard to kill that yeah. you can't kill to teach you the lesson you need to run away. Yeah. But like I, I remember you remember when uh I put you when we did that dragon one sh- that dragon campaign yeah. with the four years. 100%. You guys fought a blue dragon. Yeah, we at did. At the very beginning mm-hmm. at level 1 or 2. Just to learn you ain't shit. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. No, I agree. Uh, so I I love I that, that shit too. I, I mean like yeah. anytime you're DMing anything like you should put something impossible in front yeah. of the players. Just so they know, and then the consequences stakes. for it, right? Yeah, he, they chose not to kill it, and the town mm-hmm. died. Yeah, exactly. And then also, like at the end of the game, bring the thing back, and when they're more powerful, they understand. It's yeah. like classic gaming, like yeah. Mega Man classic. X. I, you, I mean, you know, I love Mega Man. Mega Man X sure. is one of the best games of all time. But in the very <laughs> intro scene, you it has like the perfect first level. Like you yeah. come out, you meet X, or you fight a mm-hmm. boss, and the boss kicks your ass, and then not not X Zero comes out. Zero comes out, saves your ass, and you're like, whoa, that guy's so cool and strong. I want to be like that guy. And then you spend the rest of the game leveling up and becoming as strong as that guy, and then fighting that same boss that you fought in the first level. Basically, yeah. classic. I will say, I was. I, I, I didn't disagree with you for most of your critiques for the first episode. I was like, listen, I know that I'm having a great time because these are my best friends. Sure. Uh, yes. Yeah, but yeah. I, saw, I saw the things you're saying. But the end of that first episode, I know it's tropey. I know some might think it's like you see it coming. But man, when they walk as these fucking bastards that have been cursing and mm. cutting off body parts and being little dipshits. Before they were Vox Machina in the stream, they called themselves the shits when they were back in their home <laughs> campaign. Like, th- that's how the kind of the people they yeah. were. But then this yeah, is yeah. the first moment when that town was dead and they walked in and it was so somber and Pike didn't have any more magic. And Vex is like, please, Pike, please. And then he picks up the silver coin. And then that moment when the Pamra turns and Scanlan's there do, 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 tuning his guitar and Vex is like, what are you doing? Because there's dead people. There's, this kid's dead. And he's mm-hmm. like trying to find a rhyme for dead dragon. Cause I guess we're gonna kill one. I went. I literally went like <gasps> <laughs> during the show, or during when they said it in the critical role when they were playing. Th- they didn't say that in the show. Oh. They, this is pre-stream. This never happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. so in the show, in got the in the show, got it. I straight up did not care. Like I oh. watched that whole thing, and I was like, man, I do not give two shits about anything that's going on right now. I do not care about. Let's the dead said the people. same thing. I don't care. Like they just did not get me at all. But it's so funny when he said that, I was like, that's something Nick would say while playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> yes, it is. I hope. I I dream of the day I could say something that fucking epic and cool yeah. and slick mm-hmm. as I'm walking I'm about to go fight a dragon. Yeah. I've had my moments, but that was a cool fucking moment. That was a cool moment. But it's just yeah. it, there's so much if specifically so of that character that I'm like I see Nick's Misa character a lot in uh Scanlan. Scanlan? Listen, is that his name? Yeah, Scanlan. Yeah. Scanlan. Yeah. yeah, my half elf bard is, you know, is a quintessential bard and so is mm-hmm. Scanlan, you know. I uh I I hope to be like Sam Regal someday. <laughs> But yeah, what what how would you feel? How would you feel like playing through a D and D game and like having these th- kind of things happen where it's like this blue, <laughs> this this blue dragon comes and quashes you? Would you would you feel inclined to go back and fight the blue dragon to save the town? Would you want that same thing? I yeah, I would, Nick. This is yeah, I would. I would love it. Well, we're gonna find out how you play D and D. The second Again? roll the clip. Oh my god, how surprising! <laughs> now try this trivia. Now try this trivia, now trivia, now trivia, now trivia this. And we are back. I should give that another second, but fuck it. <laughs> Man, so here we are. Marcus, this show is based off of a D&D game. Yeah. That's a game. Mm-hmm. When we do a game on the show, we just play the game. So Marcus, we're going to play some D&D. Hell yeah. But the difference is it's just you and me here. And maybe a different difference is the thing I just sent you on our chat, which is you, Marcus Berdegas's character sheet. Oh my god! You, you so go ahead and f- open I'm that judging up. You. What the fuck stats did you give me, bro? You better give me good stats because I'm a god. Honestly, I feel like I was very generous. Go you, ahead, no. look, look at your stats. Tell me, read, read your stats. I remember it's, ten it's is loading, average. It's loading. It's loading. It's loading. Oh, okay. Remember, ten is average. Ten is like a regular person. Okay. You should probably have tens for everything, if we're being honest uh, about I'm the way the god. world works. 
and okay. you need I to think acknowledge I was very that. Generous. You tell me what. Uh, you made me a, a human, level three barge, 13 strength, 12 dexterity, 12 constitution, 16 intelligence. Wow. Thank you very much. 11 wisdom, 16 charisma. That's a lie, but I appreciate it. Marcus, um, you, you get the whole room on your side when you enter it. You do nice. great. I've seen nice. you in action. Hell You've yeah. done great. Oh, you're mm-hmm. blushing a little bit. <laughs> uh, I appreciate it. <laughs> now, Marcus, uh-huh. your day starts just like most of your days. You wake up, you give a kiss to your girlfriend on the way out the door, you pack your bag, and you go and wait for the bus. There you are on the corner waiting for your M65 bus to bring you into Manhattan uh, Thursday morning to get to work. And you got on the bus, Marcus. You swipe your card. But as you walk in to the bus, you get this sinking feeling in your stomach because no one else is on the bus with you. It's just you and the bus driver. You walk in excited that you get a seat, but then wondering where everyone else is. Marcus, what's in your backpack that you pack every day for work? Do I have to read a list here? No, you tell me. Literally tell me. Oh, my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because it's always on me. I'm always gaming. Yeah. Uh, my <laughs> headphones. Mm-hmm. I carry a, a, a pouch that has a, a phone charger and a few cables for stuff. Cords. Uh-huh. Okay. A few cords and cables and outlet plugs and stuff. Back of batteries. A phone stand. And oh, a huge bottle of water. I always carry a this guy, this big boy, stickers and everything on it. All right, Marcus, here you are in this bus with no one else. What do you do? So this exact scenario happens so many times where I'm on the bus by myself. And what I would do is turn on my switch, play whatever game I'm currently playing, find a delightful podcast like now try this to listen to mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. put that shit on and go about my business. Marcus, go ahead and make a perception check. That was a, let's see if it adjusts. It doesn't. A six. Mm, well, you have plus four, which means that a 10. 10. That's, you don't notice a lot of things that are different. This seems like a n- normal every day. You do notice that the bus driver is a different one than you usually see. Oh, really? You've never seen this man before. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Now, as you're driving along, you're playing your game. Let's say you're playing some uh, Hollow Knight or something. Oh, some indie yeah, bullshit beautiful. Game. I mm, just finished Hollow Knight that, not that long ago. Oh, perfect. You hear, you see a little, and then a, and then a, and now you just have static on your screen. You look up, fuck. wondering what the fuck's going on. And I you can't afford another switch. It's it's not just your switch. It It's foggy outside. Oh, my God. Everything's so foggy. What the hell's going on? Am I in silent? I would immediately think I'm in Silent Hill. If, we're play- if I'm playing myself, I'm in Silent yeah, you Hill. Are. I'm panicking. Okay, what do you do? I, what do, you do? I'm, is the bus driver... Now, I checked the bus driver. Now, mm-hmm. is the bus driver normal looking or does he look like a silent hill monster like what's going on there the bus driver is a normal man in normal bus driver attire uh okay. he's an older man with sagging skin pale with a few liver spots and wispy silver hair yeah staring straight ahead at the road and driving which seems weird because even the front of the bus seems a little too foggy to really see much mm-hmm. but he's still driving as if nothing is different and nothing is wrong i would and uh, now you realize you've been on the bus for a while and no one else has gotten on i would approach the bus driver and be like man some weather we're having there right he says oh this is nothing i've been on the road for 47 years and uh this is just another day in my route uh, do you know how long before we get to the city i'm i'm running late for work oh can't be long now don't worry i'll get you there you know keanu reeves rode on my bus one time did he really yeah the guy from the matrix yeah, i think he was uh he was preparing for that movie of his what you call it the uh, matrix uh, nah nah that was acceleration Excel- or uh, nitro speed. or nah that's not it no Die Hard four nah i don't okay. know okay and he gets and he just focuses back on the road okay uh i say uh, 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 can you let me off the bus <laughs> I, oh I, sure sure yeah, yeah, yeah. i can, can, I, I can pull over here yeah, yeah he he pulls over he pulls the thing mm-hmm. and he looks at you and he says good luck out there uh i say you too buddy and i now as you exit the bus uh-huh it's weird because the bus has has stopped where there doesn't seem to be any more road you walk off the bus and right under your feet you feel the soft soft feel of grass you New look Jersey up and the fog has grass. dissipated a little bit you look behind you, the man is gone. There's just an empty bus. And as you oh take God. a couple steps forward and let the fog dissipate and let your eyes adjust a little more, you realize everything's grassy. 
Uh, make a perception check for me. I got a seven plus four is mm-hmm. a eleven. Nice. You uh you don't notice anything else. It's pretty foggy. You do hear water, and then when you do look back where the man used to be, there are some things on his chair, but you can't really make out what they are. The man used to okay. So where the man used to be, there's some stuff on his chair. I grab the stuff from the chair. Ah, well, you pick up some. It's weird. It almost looks like some kind of uniform or armor it's heavy mm, it's i've got put it studs on. on it it's made of leather okay I marcus go on. ahead on your character sheet go can to your I, inventory and click studded leather can i get put it over my clothes yes you can put it right on over your clothes nice and also right next to the letter was a hand axe you can also click hand axe if you'd like to pick it up now what would you like to do i would like to uh look around and see if there's anybody that i can talk to ask what's going make on make an investigation check Okay, my investigation is plus four. So let's go with uh, seven. So, Marcus, as you look around, uh, you rolled an 11, so you don't really see too much. You can tell now after walking a little bit that it's 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 grass almost everywhere. And in front of you is a waterfall. But you also hear something almost above the water. You hear singing. So, Nick, I'm sorry to do this to you, but I'm a gamer and an anime weeb. I know I'm being isekai okay? I've been isekai I know these things. And if we're in a game, there's always something behind the waterfall. So I'm going to check. I know there's noise coming above the waterfall. But As you approach the, the waterfall, because it's foggy, you do see the silhouette of a figure. And you can hear the song more clearly. And it, and it goes, you just try, 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 try again. But I now try this thing until my end. If (laughs) I only had a best friend to try things with, then I could really now try this. Wow, Nick, are you just have you? Am I going to come across a series of new intro songs that you that are you that you are (laughs) pitching to me in the form of a Dungeons and Dragons campaign? Marcus, as you approach the waterfall, you see a beautiful woman sitting there with her feet dangling on a rock inside of the water. You don't know if I find her beautiful. What she looks like? Beautiful. Okay, fair enough. I find her beautiful. (laughs) (laughs) she has long matted silver hair she's not wearing anything at all okay her legs are cover my eyes okay what do you say i say uh i'm sorry to interrupt uh, your your bathe time but um i heard your song and i wanted to know what was making that beautiful sound she she says nothing she stops singing and you just hear a (gasps) and you hear a splash I said, I can't see anything, so I, I'm assuming you're still there or you left. Let me know. I don't want to take my hand down and see you naked. You don't hear anything. Okay, I, I like sl- I peek because I genuinely don't want to see this naked lady. You don't. She's not there. In, no okay, longer. thank Seems, God. You gather Ooh. with your 16 intelligence that maybe she jumped into the water. Ah, nice. Sick. Is it deep? Is it like a... You'd have to get closer to really see. Okay, I get closer and I try to investigate and see if she went like just beneath the water she's hanging out in the area or if she's gone gone as you do that sh- you hear a sound almost like a like a ringing and then it, it feels like you're sitting hearing that same melody you're hearing before but now it sounds like it's coming from all over you uh oh all around and then you see her fly out of the water <gasps> and you need to make a wisdom saving throw for is me is she still naked Make a wisdom save. Yes, she is still naked. Make oh, a wisdom no. saving throw for me. I got wisdom saving throw. Oh, I got a six. You you stop moving. Uh-huh. You do nothing. As she flies out of the water, she lands in front of you. She sulks step by step to you. She looks at you in your eyes, looks you up and down. She's still very naked, but you can't uh-huh. look away now because you, you are charmed. Okay, got it. She puts her hand across your face and she says, you should never stop trying, my love. And then she slashes your face. Oh, no. Oh, God. Let's see. She has advantage on the roll because you're incapacitated. Does a 14 hit you? It 
does. Yes, it does hit me. You take four damage. You are no longer charmed. Roll for initiative, nice. baby. Hell yeah. Let's go. My initiative <laughs> is nine. God, I can't get okay, like a uh, You go a first. Ten. What are you going to do? Hell yeah. I'm going to. Uh, can I bardic inspiration myself? No, right? Uh, No. Okay. I'm going to do what's unsettling words. As a bonus action, you spend your bardic inspiration and choose one creature you see with a roll d6. Creature must subtract the total. Huh. Okay. Let's look. At you feel spells. as you're here and after you got attacked that mm -hmm. you feel something tingly from your butthole all the way inside of you to your stomach. And it oh. feels like if you, you have this like knowledge of different ways to fight her back that you have never experienced before. You think you feel like your words are going to be stronger and more magical than ever you thought before. You have spells. Ah, uh, okay, and a good. Nice. And a hand axe. Okay. Ooh, and a hand axe. I was going to slap yep. her with my water bottle for a second. I was trying you to figure out what I'd do. I didn't want to sacrifice my switch because if you die here, you die in real life, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to do vicious mockery. Okay, what did do you say to her to insult her when you do vicious mockery? I say, uh, your singing voice is atrocious. I lied earlier about the nice sound. <laughs> She rolled a 10 on her wisdom save. She fails. Nice. Go ahead and roll a D4, and you do that damage to her, Marcus. Okay. So much damage. I should have just attacked her. D4. Gonna grab my dice from my drawer. Okay, got a D4. I got four damage. Ooh, she takes four damage. As you say these words to her, you feel if they cut right through her, and she goes, ah! and you can nice. tell you did some good damage. Hell yeah. Hell then yeah. it's her turn. She jumps into the air in front of you and tries to slash your face again. She uh, does eight but, hit. But she has disadvantage. Uh, Why does she have hit. disadvantage? Oh, because of vicious mockery? Vicious mockery, yeah. Honestly, I do that all the time and I had no idea. That <laughs> wow, it really does it? Wow, uh -huh. okay, great. I had no idea to that. Great. She uses her second attack, tries to hit you. She rolled a 13. Does that hit? Yes. I'm iron class 13, right? Ooh, okay. Baby, she does three damage to you. Oh, God damn it. Come on, man. I'm fucking taking so much damage. Okay. Well, I can't use. I, okay. I'm going to attack her and let me roll for that. I have a hand axe. I'm going to slice and dice, baby. Let's go. Oh, I rolled a 19 plus Ooh, three. That hits. Okay. Go ahead and roll damage. D6. I'm going to roll. D6 plus one. Five. Ooh. You do eight. She's looking rough. Hell yeah. Do you do anything else? I don't think I have two as bonus action. Nope. I do not. Do unsettling else. words if you want. Oh, I do unsettling okay. words. What do you say to unsettle her? I've got a boner. And she goes, she just slashed her right across the chest with your hand axe. It's the most blow you've ever seen in your real life. And you feel powerful and strong with this yeah. hand axe in your hand. And you're like, yes, this is what's been missing from your life. And uh -huh. as the blood is trickling down, she seems like upset. But when you say that, she just looks at you and goes, she seems unsettled. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What now she will attack you. She does not have disadvantage this turn. But she rolled an eight and a seven. So 11 or 10 hit you? No. She misses and it's your turn. And now she has disadvantage. No, she has a D6 negative to her next saving throw. So if yep. you did a spell with a saving throw, it would do more. Hell yes. Which is, let's do Tasha's hideous laughter, which I think needs a saving throw. Mm. This spell means you make her laugh so hard she doesn't do anything during her turn. What do you say to her to make her uncontrollably laugh? <sighs> <laughs> Bards are hard. Bards are hard to play. I say, knock, knock. Who's there? No one. No one who? And then that's it. That's all I got. And I hope the joke works. <laughs> uh, she rolled a 12, but then she minus fails. a four. So that's an eight. She fails. And she goes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good. <laughs> <laughs> good, good, good. And she just doesn't stop laughing. Now it's her turn. She continues to laugh and fall prone. So she's fallen on the ground. And now it is your turn. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm going to attack. You attack with your hand axe. You have advantage on the attack. Hell yeah. Let's go. I got a an 18. That hits. Okay. And I do five damage. How do you want to do this? Oh, do I have to? I don't want to kill her. Okay, what do you want to do? I I knock her. You I don't like, have a bloodlust in this apocalyptic world. No, I don't care. I 
I, if I'm being isekai'd into a world, I'm not immediately killing people because I don't know what's going on. I need some time. You're to right. Out. So what do you do? What are the rules? What if she's like a race of person that's discriminated against us in this world? And the first thing I did was murder her. I don't want to do that. Marcus, what do you do then? I like grab the I like, you know, how the flat side of the axe. And I just like yep. bonk her on the head. OK, she seems unconscious. She falls right. unconscious to your feet. What do you do with her? I do nothing with her. I do I leave her alone entirely. OK, if she's naked as and she she's fine passes out. You look to your side and you notice a chest that wasn't there before. Mm -hmm. OK, I, I will. I cast knock. Ah, how do you cast knock? What does that look like? I turn on my Nintendo switch and I, I like then a, a, a magical hand, like uh, two hands, like the uh, Mr. Hand from uh, fucking smash bros come out uh -huh. and I yeah. control them to open the lock. Beautiful. Like a, like a drone or up. something. It totally does that. And inside you see a potion that says, drink me. You see a map and you find this staff that i just sent you in the chat oh hell yeah let's go staff okay griffin's saddle what griffin's saddlebag oh, is a grasping staff person that i follow on instagram and patreon that makes custom D, &D items that i use in my campaigns oh that's so fun yeah i back their kickstarter and i have his physical book uh, so you find this this old looking staff that almost looks petrified and the staff is made up by all these interlocking hands Hell all yeah. Full of this greenish glow at the mm -hmm. top. Nice. And you have that staff and this map and this potion. What do you do? Let's go. I try to see if there's a path to town. I look over in the horizon and see if there's a, like a castle in the distance or some kind of somewhere to go. Make an intelligence check for me. My intelligence is 17 or well, I rolled 17. Ooh, nice. You realize that if you just look down at your map, uh, it'll show you the way you're supposed to go. I look at my map and I go where I'm supposed to go. Do you do anything else? I grab all I grabbed all my items. I looked in the box. I think I'm good to go. Great. I have my staff in my you, hand. Perfect. As you start on this journey, you follow this path. It's pretty easy to follow. But after some traveling, you realize something very strange. You're still in New York. You see landmarks that you recognize, but everything has been grown over with plants and there's animals walking the streets nothing dangerous yet animal wise but it looks as if no one set foot in the city for centuries at least oh my god and now you realize that uh the bus driver got you pretty close to work because you see broadway mm. you realize you're right there where you go every day at work and this is where the path is leading you from the map uh, a long time ago some would have called it Times square but now it's just a sad remnant of what it wow. used to be and as you stand there contemplating your life contemplating mm -hmm. where you are no, trying to figure it out realizing this is where you went day in and day out yeah the earth starts to shake <gasps> And cracks and schisms form all around the ground. And one of the <laughs> erupts over and a creature flies out. This creature with horses a bottom and a demon on top with a long, gnarled, spiky tail. Uh, okay. For D&D &D nerds, it would be called an Armonite. Oh, wow. And Marcus, to find out what happens against you and the Armonite, mm -hmm. everyone's going to have to join patreon.com slash now try this cast and go into our messages and say, you want to see how this story ends with Marcus <laughs> Berdegas <laughs> against the Armonite in New York City, far flung future. Oh, I love it. I love it. And this is how we start our animated Amazon show right here. Hell right yeah. That's how it We're trying to get in there. <laughs> Nick, I have some facts for you. Okay. It has nothing to do with Critical Role, but it has something to do with Critical Role. I was curious to say if you would say that this was like the first animated series based on Dungeons and Dragons or a Dungeons and Dragons campaign. And I was like, I would was well, wondering. I, I know there's the old 80s D&D &D show. The old 80s D&D show? Oh, the Dungeons yeah, and Dragons like show? The kids. No. Yeah. There is an anime from i want to say the oh. 80s or 90s called record of lotus war it's a very famous anime they recently came out with a video game for the switch new stuff for this is still coming out that was oh. originally based on the creator's campaign that they had with their friends it was oh, wow. japanese Dungeons and dragons which at the time because of production of D20s, you couldn't really get D20s in version. Japan. So they had to create their own 
version based on D6s because D6 dice were commonly available. So oh. their friends had a, a campaign that they were running in in that world, and Whoa. they turned it into an anime. Record of Lotus War? Yep. Wow. It looks like D&D. Mm -hmm. Have you ever watched it? No, I'm going to watch it. I'm very excited to watch it. That seems really dope. It seems like classic D&D, Lord of the Rings style fucking elves and dwarves and shit. Yeah, it was on my radar because of the new game that just came out. That's getting a lot of praise. I got it and I'm excited to play it. And then I was like, what Whoa. is this? I want to watch it. And so I looked into it. There's a picture it. of them fighting Tiamat, the five headed dragon. Yeah. Whoa. Cool. Awesome. What kind of questions I, I, do you have? For I just me? thought was that I don't the only question. Huh? That's not a question. Oh. You formed it like you had questions. For no, it. no, no. I just had <laughs> had this for you. I wanted to they tell you the, this. that one question. That one oh, thing, okay. not a question. <laughs> yeah, I guess oh, okay. the question. I wanted to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wanted to know if you heard of it because I was <laughs> I was very excited. Like I, before even this That's very was, cool. Before we got this challenge on Patreon, I was like, "Oh man, this is so cool!" I have to tell Nick. And then we got this challenge, and then I forgot about it, and I just remembered again. I was like, "I it's on my list to watch," because. It was based on their D&D game, and I want to see what their game was like. I really want to watch it. Oh, it's on Funimation. I'm definitely going to check that out. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Very cool. The The byline says, in a, in a land torn by war, young Parn and a ragtag team, rag -tag team <laughs> of adventurers set out to restore peace to the island of Lotus. Sounds epic. Mm -hmm. Looks like Fire Emblem. Yeah. Also, uh, back in the day... Uh, Call of Cthulhu used to be popular in Japan too, and fans would oh. go and like create little animated videos that would they were they would upload in the early early days of the internet to like fucking e-bombs world or some shit of like the campaign that was going on because they would record audio logs. They they used to do this thing there where they would release books of people's campaigns of like the dialogue like someone would be sitting there writing everything that they were saying down while That's they were cool. playing to the dragons and like then release them in weekly like zine kind of things and record of lotus war was part of that magazine as well i think dnd is one of the coolest things i feel like i should have mentioned it at the top of the show but i'm a bad person so i didn't <laughs> dnd is an outlet for so many different things mm -hmm. you can hear my DD &D outlet on my new show that was just released called bad guys and b-sides hell yes where me and a ragtag team of musicians form a band that we go across americana on tour and crazy shit happens and we use DD &D to tell that story guys and then you take someone like Tizam, who gave us this suggestion. Or, hold on before you get to that. What's up? Guys, go show bad guys and beast guys some love. Let them know that your boy Marcus needs to be on an episode. And it's unjust that I'm not. <laughs> Listen, I think if we, you brought in any amount of you guys over there, <laughs> you guys could demand it. It would happen. We're still small. So you guys can That's totally take over that fandom get and make it all. Uh, now try this uh, venture. Now try this. Um, uh, <laughs> flick oh i just want one episode i just want i don't want to be there for a whole thing. I just want one episode. <laughs> but there's also uh, our friend design who gave us this this episode mm -hmm. is he is in the process right now of making a trilogy of books and he oh yeah all of it everything he said were you know based on his D, &D characters yes characters that yes. we made are mm -hmm. in that story that's exciting you know? Yeah. Oh yeah. Old there's there's I feel there there's some other, other D &D like based shows like modern Quest. stuff. But I was I don't know that there's nothing that's like Harmon Quest is animated, but they it's live play as well, and they're just doing like jokes. The and whole it's thing's also, not it's all, animated. It's also it feels like it's an improv thing. It doesn't feel mm -hmm. like it's a fantasy D and D thing. Yeah. You know? Almost. Well, I think this is just the most mainstreamy, like mm -hmm. in our face. Yes. This is D and D. I love Harmon Quest, but this is like Record of Lotus Harman War Quest. is separated from its source material in that you could. So many people know that it's an anime, but not everyone knows it's based on a D and D game. This animated yeah. series, I think, will, can be the same way. People can discover the Critical Role and, think and not even know it's based on people who were streaming on Twitch. Like, that's just a possibility. Th I'm really excited to know what people are going to say about this show that don't know about it. I don't mm -hmm. think it's still so new that all the things I'm seeing about it are people reacting that are from the D, &D community, but just haven't yeah. watched Critical Role and Critical Role fans. I haven't seen anything yet. I'm excited to see reactions online of people reacting to it that don't know this stuff. I wonder if who will watch this. Like, I, I know that people, a lot of people are going to watch watched it. Invincible. I don't but, know. You know, but Invincible has comic book fans. In its own community, no, but, but I'm like saying the non-comic book fans that watch yeah. that. 
Yeah. But I'm saying, yeah, yeah, but yeah. comic books have become such a part of the thing. I wonder if D&D still has that stigma. Like, I'm so curious to see what the numbers are in terms of people that come to this show not knowing yeah. Critical Role. Yeah, and the thing is, Invincible, when they sell Invincible, they're selling it as a comic book ad- adaptation. Mm-hmm. This is not saying it's a D&D adaptation. No. It's just amazon's newest animated exactly. show yeah so i really wonder you know i feel i'm sure people feel the same way we feel of we're seeing like that that star trek animated show come out we're we're not part of star trek at all and then this yeah. random animated show and it's like this is star trek okay maybe i'll watch it yeah i'm sure most people feel like that about this yeah which i uh, now I'm let's get into nervous about go ahead yes no I'm I, I think so too i i mean I think so too. But uh, let's talk a little bit about the third episode because, oh, yeah, like episode you said, three. the third episode is kind of like where the show starts. Yes, one hundred percent. The third episode is is watchable for sure. Uh, the first two were fun and they were cute, and like the first episode, I really didn't like. The second episode, I liked more, but I still wasn't into the show, and I was worried I wasn't gonna like it. But the third episode, I was like, okay, they figured out some storytelling basics. They're like going through a character's background. You can see the inspirations from Dungeons and Dragons and from their gameplay, but it doesn't feel as heavy handed as before. And so which is funny. Yeah, this kind of felt like it felt like it was more based on their actual gameplay. But at the same time, maybe because of that, it was like a more cohesive narrative. Well, yeah. Well, remember what I said, the first two episodes were pre streamed, mm-hmm. so we don't have any of that tape. It was just from a couple random memories and them almost making the story up from scratch. Not yeah. from scratch. They remembered, but they didn't remember the dice rolls, the, the, the words that yeah. were said. You know, the fact that they say Jenga in the animated shows because they said Jenga in remember, the yeah. stream and they couldn't say Jenga. Yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because in when you watch Critical Role, they started in the middle of the campaign. They didn't start from zero. They started from at like level 10, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so Okay, that's why. Yeah. They, they started they started during the Craghammer arc, which was just this random. They went underground and fought. There were some great moments, but it was it felt like every other D&D show. Everybody who says go watch Critical Role says start at the Briarwood arc, which okay. is this. Everybody agrees. This is where the audio oh, wow. mishaps fix. This is where the eighth member leaves. Okay. This is where, <laughs> this wow. is where the story finally feels like a story because before it, it felt like a D&D game. Yeah. This is what made it feel like a narrative because this was the first time that stakes were put on a character and their backstory. Before that, they went to a dungeon because they were told to to make money yeah. and they went to do a task and they bought some monsters. Yeah. That's D&D, blah, blah, blah. Very fun. But this one's like... Like they were at dinner. This is literally how it happened on the stream. They were at a dinner for a job well done, going to Graghammer. They're mm-hmm. like, yeah, 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 you're, you're our heroes. Come here. And then Matt just casually, Talison had no idea what was happening. He just casually said, and then these people walk in, then these people walk in, and then Lord and Lady Briar would walk in. And you see Talison go, <laughs> and he's just like blank for like minutes on the yeah. stream because no one else knows. They're all like making jokes, playing. He's of just course. like, just like in the show where like Percy yes. goes like, and they like got that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's why it feels that way. That's why it feels like the show starts here because that's where the stream felt like it started. And that's all these great know. moments from this episode, like yeah. Vax sneaking upstairs, mm-hmm. like, you know, the, the Briarwoods getting away outside, you know, Percy at the end of the episode, we'll talk about it, but the thing that starts to happen to him at the end, yeah. all those happened beat for not beat for beat but those moments yes. are from the stream so online and that stream are sorry and that stream those moments i think are what make the show special mm, you know okay. those yeah. improv in the moment talison improv the line your soul is forfeit mm-hmm. and that is just like one of his famous catchphrases from the show and yeah. there it is in the show you know and it works yeah, yeah, yeah but um what i was gonna say is that like what people have been going online now and doing is going and editing the gameplay against the animated show which is really interesting so i was watching a couple of those so i could be like okay well what was taken from the show and what was taken from the animated series yeah it's it's really fun to watch because the whole jenga thing i knew that watching the episode because i'd watched that before yeah i watched the episode so i think that's gonna be people are i think those clips uh, honestly critical role should probably do that themselves yes (laughs) yes first of all uh, to monetize it but mm-hmm. th- what a way to get people to get into the the, the show yeah right? like if they do this right like critical role is gonna get it it's already the number one D D show it's already the number one twitch maker on twitch they have the most subscriptions yeah you remember twitch's things oh, leaked yeah, critical role was number one yeah that's yeah true. it's already that what's yeah. it gonna be now if the show takes off 
It's true. I'd be really Wild. interested to see what happens because this yeah. episode, you know, we we learn more. We get some actual story, right? We learn more yeah. about talk uh, about talk about it a little name? bit. Say what it is. What's his fucking name? Percy. Percival. Percy. I don't know any of their names yet. We learn more about Percy and Percy and his backstory. Basically, he has. It's so funny watching this because. You know it's based on someone playing Dungeons and Dragons. So you're like, this is such fucking Dungeons and Dragons bullshit. I have such a yeah. tragic, dark backstory. My yeah. family was murdered in front of me and I narrowly escaped with my life. They happen yeah. to be vampires also. And also very <laughs> sexy. But also, <laughs> I shoot guns. It's like, okay, yeah. cool, man. Yeah, awesome. Good job. Yeah. It's like all, almost all D&D characters feel a little edgelordy. With their 100%. like backstories. Percy's and Talison is a hundred percent an edgelord. Mm-hmm. He's if you watch, you would associate yourself the most with the things he says and does because <laughs> he is an edgelord. He knows what he's doing. Uh, he is goth. He is dark. Okay. He usually has purple hair mm-hmm. and like shaves his sides and yeah, like yeah. wears crazy outfits. And his name is Talison Chaffee. How can you not be? That's his real life in the world name. <laughs> How can you not be an edge lord if your name is Talison Jaffe? Yeah. So, um, so that's just fun fact. Fun. He voices the Flash in uh the Mortal Kombat DC game. Oh, that's cool. Injustice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. You can go through that with all the characters. Like, oh, by the way, he does this. Darren, and you'd be like, they no do shit. so much voice acting. Darren even was like, why is this girl's voice so familiar? And I was like, she's oh, she, and she figured she looked it up, things. and it was Ellie from Last of yeah. Us Two, and we had played that yep. together. Yeah. Yeah, they're all super fit. Yeah, it's they're just so the, funny. The, the like, of the crop of that world. They are good voice actors, and so they get a lot of yeah. work, and they're involved in the community, and they're famous also, which gives them more notoriety, so you want them in their games on top of them being good actors. And so yeah. I've just How heard funny. all their fucking voices so much Everywhere. in my life. that it Sam Regal Scalin it doesn't is ruin Donatello the show. from the Ninja Turtles yes. cartoon yes, yes. when we were growing up. But it doesn't ruin the show, but I'm just like, I hear Ellie talking to me. I hear all these like iconic characters that they've played and yeah. so it's kind of sometimes like oh fuck like the guy who's cyborg the 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 king is cyborg and it's he's cyborg, um, yeah uh, Corey Aqualad. Pay- and i Corey was Payton, like yeah god i fucking i love that yeah. guy and then now i'm just hearing great. cyborg and Aqualad talk i'm like yeah, yeah. lead the team he's guest Let's starred go. on a couple episodes yes i remember that yeah i watched yeah, that he was I uh shakasta during the second campaign mm-hmm. and that's the thing about the show right if this takes off at all they already finished their second season of the campaign they're doing the third season that's what i was saying to it's Darren. there that's what i was saying it's to Darren. There. i was like if this show is very successful then we're getting Even a bunch moderately. of seasons to finish this campaign then we can get yeah. more seasons of the next campaign which is also a different thing it's a different story so it doesn't even have to yeah. like i don't know if you hated this one you could still watch that one which is kind of yeah. cool so yeah they have a lot ahead it's of almost them like an, uh, well. anthology right yeah and in an ingrained anthology it's so cool i think my favorite things about the episode where i think one of my favorite thing is they're all also anime fans because they're mm-hmm. voice actors in video games and american television but and also yeah. a lot of anime like mm-hmm. the the big ones naruto bleach dragon ball z they all voice all like laura does trunks yeah fucking grog voices roy mustang and full metal alchemist fucking matt mercer voices hits from dbz super you know mm-hmm. like they, they're the fucking cream of the crop here and um so they love anime so i just love all those anime th- like when percy's yeah. glasses fog over come on what an anime moment when he's like telling mm-hmm. his backstory and his glasses go yeah right over i'm yeah, like Darren, these fucking weebs <laughs> i was, fucking Darren weebs. was watching and she was like what is, what's happening <laughs> where's the like, oh, glasses anime bullshit and you're like it's anime epic. bullshit i'm yeah. not like epic it's anime bullshit i don't wear glasses glasses for losers with bad eyesight you know what i want they have those glasses where you do this and they will and they light up yeah do the thing i yeah. know you want that i know you want that so badly nick I, I very much do basically what happens in this episode is they fight the dragon and then they get together to celebrate in the celebration they invite percy's trauma to dinner and they come <laughs> and they're just like hey they guys invite all the lords and ladies of the realm yeah sure and, and two of them happen to be the people that like killed his family and so he's upset yes. the whole time so then vax or vex one of them goes <laughs> vax. and investigates their room discovers a weird book and gets caught he gets bitten it turns out that these people are vampires there's a little there's a fight outside Only he's a vampire oh she wow. has a reflect she has a reflection oh, okay. there's a moment where they pass a mirror got it got it got it okay yeah. i remember he's a vampire. that yeah she's some kind of witch lady cool 
So they fight. She's not a vampire. They fight <laughs> Mr. Vampire and Miss Not a Vampire. And yep. they lose. They lose badly. You get yeah. their asses kicked. Yeah. Which I think great. that's a cool part of the show, right? Well, I mean, it has to be. Jesus Christ. It's a cool part yeah. of any show. You don't have the, them beat every fucking character that they fight. Well, fuck it. It fucking happens, dude. It sometimes. Fucking happens. Sometimes. But most, well, that's why Invincible part. was cool. And like the boys was interesting, right? Like mm-hmm. they, 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 the Amazon's other shows like get it. Like you shouldn't win all yeah. the time. But like, in anime loses all the goddamn time. things like they're yeah. going to fight a strong enemy and that they don't kill immediately because that's what yeah. builds tension and sets up stakes. Yeah, I think uh, I love... <sighs> Listen, I don't know if you're fucking here for it, but they have Scanlan making full on fucking songs just to fucking uh, it's like my motherfucking uh, beads. I'm like, yeah. listen, I get why people I, I'm like, because in the show, when they streamed it, he would sing like pop songs, like people songs you would yeah, know for Bardic Inspiration. Yeah, yeah. So they needed to make up new songs for everything. I like everything so far. Nothing's hit me like it's going to be like mm. on my like phone yet. Yeah, but I feel like it's going to be coming. I feel like I'm gonna. It's gonna come. I feel like where I'm at, as soon as the song ends, I'm happy it's over. Like I'm just like, sure. If there was any more of this, and if I had to listen to like a longer version, I would be annoyed more. But I love That's musicals, fair. and I love when songs. I like. I love the random songs that are in Adventure Time. I love those songs from Steven Universe. Like I love when my cartoons have songs in our musical. But yeah. I feel like it's in line with the sort of like softish humor. That they have yeah. where it's just like butt stuff and sex farts and poops and balls and you're like okay cool awesome great we're adults here <laughs> like you saying this is an adult show then make it an adult show i, I hear you I, I i think the bops will come i have faith mm-hmm. i have faith that we're gonna get some bops as we go yeah but i oh that final fight though was really cool i really love this fight good. outside because it it seemed like a drag out you get fucking silas briar would summon his sword the animation that sword was plays great. a big part i love the animation sword. was mm-hmm. incredible for this fight i was like this feels like legend of korra it doesn't feel like oh, yeah. the big animes like naruto like those fights are bleach where they have like really no, really good yet. fights but it, it was good yeah, my only I really complaint is I understand why the dragon had to be CGI, but you know, CGI always takes me a little out of it when everything else is animated. Yep, I agree. Uh, I get it. It's it's hard. It would be hard to animate that big thing. I get it. It's just like, ugh. yeah. I felt the same way about Brotherhood when they made some I've of that seen CGI. CGI done like CGI is done really well a lot of times. A lot a lot of two D things that you think are two D are actually CGI in modern anime, which is really cool. But that's I've rare. never seen it. Any- is rare. I feel, I feel like you see the jump, like in just in like the Dragon Ball Brawly movie, right? That movie probably had more money than any no, of these shits do. And when no, that, that, and that when that one's yeah, CGI, yeah. it's like CGI now. Yeah, it was also annoying. Yeah, I yeah. agree. I I don't like it, but I've seen it done well. But you, it yeah. does. It's not. It's never when it's done well. It's not a transition to CGI. It is yeah. like the whole thing is like the CGI two D hybrid that looks good. Yeah, but it, so that it, was a little like jarring. Having it against the two D. Is jarring, which is why I really like the fight at the end. Though I will say, in the second episode, during that fight, as they all did the work together thing and they were all doing the thing, they're all their things. I was there, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when when Grog, they're like, Grog, go get him. And he said, I would like to rage. Yeah, I did almost cry. I did, I did almost cry. Why? I I know he says that in the campaign, but why did you almost cry? That's the only reason. That's because it was there. I've been waiting for years for this to happen. And there he was on screen saying, I would like to rage as his character jumping and fighting a dragon. I can't explain it. I feel no, like they're my best friends. It's so good that <laughs> you genuinely love thing. this. It's so funny because was, like, I, I feel like that's the point of this podcast, right? Like we do the things we love and we got lucky yeah. that a fan also happened to love the same exact thing you love. And true. the fact that you are out here pouring your heart out is so wonderful to me. And it's such a beautiful thing just to see that you love this so much. I almost fucking cried. I respect it. <laughs> I was there with Lexi and I was like, she's like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> he's, he's doing the thing. He's, 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 he said the thing. He's, yeah. he's, he said the thing. I'm a fucking fucking. It's but like in fucking uh, infinity in yeah. end game when he says Avengers assemble, right? No, and everyone's well, like, that's different. Why is that? See, different? Here's the thing. When, when he says Avengers assemble, everyone in that theater knows because they've been there for the whole journey. When he says, I would, I would like, like to rage. rage, that doesn't mean anything to me. I don't know what the fuck that is. I'm it like, wasn't ah, for you. that's a weird thing to say. You can just do it, man. You've been you've been raging your whole life. What's happened? 
But I understand as the player saying yeah. it, you know, and then it kind of becoming listen, what listen, the character says. You like clobbering time. You like crush phrases. You Let's don't go. know me. Come on. You don't know there. if I like clobbering time. You think that's my favorite catchphrase? I I know you like the thing. It's clobbering time. You like Fantastic time. Four. I do like, <laughs> you do like it. Do like listen, Four. I'm just saying your your ass. If they do an MCU Fantastic Four movie the right way, and if Ben says it's clobbering time, you're gonna be like, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, no, <laughs> you got me. Your arms. I see myself in the theater, like being like, he said the thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it was. Uh-huh. That's exactly what uh-huh. it was. But uh, but yeah, that's the show. That's the show. And listen, you you're gonna have to take over because if you want to talk about anything else, go for it. I I can continue talking about the show for I hours. That. I loved everything about it. I'm so happy it's here. I can't wait for the next episodes. Uh-huh. Oh, so good. at the end of the show, Percy puts on a plague doctor mask. He has this weird Ooh, yeah. demon shadow, shadow come out of him, and he says, "Your soul is forfeit." And I was like oh and that see here's the thing i wanted to make this point earlier i have one last point but back to the point about everything being brutal this episode didn't really have as much brutality so when he shot the dude's fingers you're like whoa 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 dude you're going too far but oh he already the, cut off somebody's, they already hand, cut for off bar, someone's right? hand earlier during a middle yeah. so like why do they care what happens to this guy you know like so it's just like, it's like uh, it feels like you take away from these don't disagree with you when you do I stuff like that saying. earlier but the fact that this episode by itself didn't have much like of that happening you still kind of felt it you still felt it and i was there for it i was like okay yeah no why is he shooting this guy he needs to stop i will say that does happen in DD though right it happens in our fucking campaign yeah, we're like fucking mow a whole bunch of series of people yeah, down and then we're like no why are you killing that why are you hurting that one dude's like why can't we, we torture him? we just killed the other fucking, people yeah we just killed 30 people and that is the one um, weird thing about digital dragons that you're just murdering the yeah, shit out of everybody and it's you're true like, a couple quick uh rundowns of some things that were really cool david tennant was the blue dragon like what it get how so fucking cool is that oh, Some of the voice sounds that's they cool got. that's cool that's so cool oh you know it's funny darren was like why is the dragon scottish or something it's david Tennant. that's so funny i love yeah, that i know all the all the fuck steph steph stephanie beatrice is lady chemo yes, we just did an account though yeah so cool couple more things what else oh just just not, not to spoil things about percy sure but about the plague doctor is he there's a reason that percy's the only person we see with a with guns oh with a gun. he invented them no one else has guns this is the start of the industrial yes. age yes 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 yeah and it does have to do what's what's going to happen that is going to be explored and oh, as lexi cool. said while we were watching it no he is not the plague we were watching it and she was like into it because the last episode i think is dope and even if you don't mm-hmm. know what's going on you're like this is pretty cool and after that all happened and she turned me she's like Oh, so he's like the plague? You mean like Rona? Like I literally had no idea what she meant. I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like sickness? Like, what are you talking about? I was I I didn't want to like I didn't want to go into a whole diatribe spoiling everything. So I was just yeah. like, um no. no. <laughs> <laughs> he's not the uh, plague. But it was very cute. Because she was That's like, cute. Oh, he's the plague. <laughs> also, another shout out, Matthew Mercer, who's the DM. He is all he he voices all these random characters during the show, yes. but there's a character that looks like him in every oh, episode. I pointed it out. Yeah, we, it was like yeah, yeah. in episode three, very it was fun. very obvious and it was super funny. Darren, I he was like, in one and two as well. Matt Mercer, but in three yeah, it was like Gro- obvious. Yeah, that one's him. Well, when Grog steals the a- ale to hide behind the guy they were running, uh-huh. uh, f- he was the guy whose ale he stole. Like uh, okay, they're got like got fucking up Matt's life in every episode i kind of hope they funny. keep doing that like so that. he's their own cabbage man like, uh, a la i like avatar that and they're all big fans of avatar and i'm i mean they got azula in this right that's her name it's great i love how lexi in the chest says i don't know there was a witch people have powers <laughs> to <laughs> her justification fair. of why there was a, a plague. plague guy plague based character now next up we have more of the briarwood arcs gonna happen they're obviously mm-hmm. gonna go to whitestone and shit's gonna happen i'm really excited to see I'm excited what's your what what the last thing i guess i'll ask is um what are some of your expectations for the show what do you hope to see what do you want to see are you excited for what's coming next? I would say this. I think that episode three is a good indicator for what's to come. I think that yeah. if you look at any first season of a great show, there are definitely like low moments and notes that could be made about like improving. Yeah. Usually the beginning, stuff. right? Yeah. I mean, a- even Avatar has some like, OK, this isn't as strong of an episode. And I, it happens. And you're just figuring out your pacing. But episode three was a good like show of what they can do. And I'm excited mm-hmm. to potentially watch more because I liked it. 
I liked episode three a lot. Great, Mark. Oh, wait. I, I guess I should read Lexi's. Hold on. Me, she said, finally, I just started asking a ton of questions because I got tired of Nick being super happy and me being like, cool. But I liked it in the end. So she was she was in the yeah. Lexi, I think, was the biggest barometer of like, she knows nothing. She does not know D&D. Yeah. She does not know fantasy as uh-huh. a genre. She's never seen Lord of the Rings. She watched Invincible mm-hmm. without any contest, liked it a lot, wanted to finish okay. it. That's about as close as she's gotten. And the beginning, she felt just like you. She yeah. asked me, can we rewatch the first episode? Because I was kind of falling asleep and I want to give it a special shot because I know you love Aww, it, Nick. Oh, that's uh, which so is super sweet. sweet. She that's was so, so sweet. sweet. Because I was so excited because I saw it early. I got yeah, a free screening days before because I was a Kickstarter. Mm-hmm. So that was really sweet of her. But then by the end, she was like, oh but she was saying the same things like who are these people why do she literally yeah. said why do i care at yeah. the end of the first episode you know yeah so 100 at the end i that's what yeah. i said too i was just like why do i care why should i care about these people and it's not until episode three that i'm like okay cool i am starting to care yeah uh all right marcus that's the show uh we got a couple questions and what questions marcus did you like the show i did like it i did like it i was so upset because i wanted to like this so badly and after episode one i was like nope i don't like this after episode two i was like fuck i still don't like this fuck i'm not gonna like this and i was i was mad i was like i want to like this give it to me yeah but i'm not gonna lie so i was like i'm gonna have to argue with nick about this on the podcast and the whole thing and then episode 3k and i was like thank god what a reprieve yeah a good episode yeah. of TV, a good episode of an animated series that I am excited about. Yeah, it's funny because when we when I found out it was the Blue Dragon fight for the first two episodes, I was elated because that's mm-hmm. something that I knew happened pre stream that there was no comics about. They never talked about. I never knew how it happened. And now knowing because they've made asides to it during the campaign that I know because yeah. I've watched the whole show uh-huh. all the way through. And I was like, they've made illusions. And it was really cool seeing that. So to ask me the same question, did I like the show? No, I love the show. yeah i i forgot this wasn't your challenge again that this was a, a fan challenge from patreon yeah so i for i will also ask you questions so nick ask me the yeah. next one so i remember what it is well the next question that i ask you is uh would you recommend this show i would recommend the show i think that it's i want to know more people who've never interacted with anything D related i want to see what they think of it i'm very curious yeah, I same think it's great super super nick, same. if we had a lot of wherewithal we should have asked more some people that's true <laughs> where would you recommend the show oh hell yeah i think nice. it was great i think i would explain to someone hey watch the first three episodes it's just like Mm -hmm. an hour of your life because there's a lot of characters and you won't get to know them until like that third episode yeah because honestly i think i really think the biggest barrier i think everything you're saying is valid you know them the jokes not coming all the way together there being a lot of fucks and the gore not lining Mm -hmm. up to the narrative i really think the biggest hurdle is really just there are seven main characters and we are not and we're used to following two or three to really really get invested in them. or it's an hour-long thing like game of thrones hey. and everyone has their own moments to shine it's not an ensemble ensemble yes. shows like this don't really happen it's hard it's hard to do for sure because then you yeah. like my hero academia tries naruto tries like there are a bunch of things that like try but then but even know, then like, there are the main characters not, yeah you have the main core group and then yeah. the other characters that you care about but they're not going to be in every well, episode. slowly come and go yeah yeah, yeah yeah you know you know you know you meet rock lee at the beginning of the show but it's not until episode 17 through 19 that then we get his backstory for three yeah. whole episodes and then you that care we're about like rock yeah lee. rock lee stands yeah, yeah. and yeah. that's not happening here we have all seven the whole time right away yeah they're all getting equal love and attention mm-hmm. which is fair but that's hard i, yeah. I really think that's it and yeah. i think that is going to feel like it goes away partly because i think as the seasons go on people do get highlights the way we mm-hmm. want. Like this yeah. is obviously Percy's highlight and we will follow Percy's quest to become a hero and a, or a villain, depending mm-hmm. on what way the story goes. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Was that your answer to would you recommend it? It was. And your question okay. is, are you going to continue to watch it? I am definitely going to continue to watch it. I think Hell I was yeah. watching it with Darren and she's into it. I'm into it. We're both feeling the critical role. Love. Finally. Finally, this thing that my best friends, like two of my closest friends, are so into and so in love with that I I want to be able to share some of that love with something I actually like can talk to them about. I see how passionate you are about this, and it sucks that I can't just get into it. And now I can't. And I'm excited. It's the I, hand he uses. That's cute. The hand. That's cute. It's on the hand. 
But yes. So, Nick, are you going to continue watching? Yeah, Marcus, yes, I'm going to continue watching, obviously. I was going to say, I was going to say, in the least surprising answer ever to a podcast episode, (laughs) Nick, will you continue watching? (laughs) Okay. That's good. Uh, Marcus, next week's my challenge. Next week is your challenge. Next week is my challenge. And I have been so psyched. You've known about this challenge for weeks because I I needed to give you time Mm -hmm. for the first time on the pod. For the very first time, Marcus, I don't know if you realize this. This is the first first time this is happening. I am giving you a video game as a challenge. challenge. I am giving you Pokemon Legends Arceus to play. Okay. Get as far as you can. Do catch as many pokes as you can. I am so excited for this game. I am a huge Pokemon fan. I love people that have been fans of our show for a long time know this. There are streams of us on our YouTube channel playing Mm Nuzlocks. We love Pokemon. Pokemon. I love it. I watch Shady Penguin every day. I watch Nuzlocks on YouTube. Yeah. But it's so hard to get into it because it's such a time sink. I'm an adult now. It's hard to mm-hmm. commit to those hours. And they don't make the games for me anymore. You know, I, I like Sun and Shield, uh, Sun and Moon a lot, but Sword and Shield feels kiddish. Brilliant I Sun and Shining Sword and Pearl Shield. feel feel pedestrian into me. Mm-hmm. So with all this footage of the new Arceus, listen, I am I know there's going to be a lot of it that's still that sophomore kiddish Pokemon things that we hate, but like something new and different to get me excited about Pokemon again. Mm-hmm. I am so excited. I hope you will be too. We are doing that next week okay. on twitch.tv slash now try this cast. We are doing Pokemon Legends Arceus. You can support us at patreon.com slash now try this cast to give us our suggestion for next month for what we are going to try. And maybe if enough of you sign up, we'll continue our D&D game from this episode. <laughs> <laughs> and you can tweet at us, Instagram us, DM us everywhere at now try this cast. Yes, you can. That was the podcast, guys. I'm so happy for everyone who showed up. We appreciate uh, you showing up to the live stream and anyone's listening later. Thank you so much. Now, go out there and try some things. Specifically, Night. Pokemon Arceus next week. Yeah. <laughs> Good night. Woo! Friends get together so they can try things. I really did almost cry when Grog said it. It was wild. I believe you 100%. You little bitch. Said the thing. He said the thing. Do 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 do.